Hi, I'm the Casual Spaceman and welcome to my channel once again. First of all, I just want to say thank you very much to everybody who subscribed to my channel. I'm really chuffed because up until I'm recording this video, I'm fast approaching uh, 500 subscribers. And that's down to one particular guy, Bob the Science Guy. Um, if you're not subscribed to his channel, as I'm sure most of you are, link below. Please subscribe to his channel. Really, really great guy because he did two reviews on, on, uh, on some of my videos on my channel. I want to say first of all sorry for the, um, not publishing the video that I promised in my uh, previous uh, news video um, and that's because I'm still waiting on some information um, there's going to be a lot of detail and it's going to dispel a lot of the myths and min misinformation um, about uh, the Apollo missions and in particular the Van Allen Bell. Well what's the subject of today's video? It's on a video by uh, a channel by the name of Mad Mix in Mad Mix Conspiracies, sorry, Mad Mix Conspiracies, so, and it's all about the moon, so I thought that's right up my alley, so let's see what he's got to say, let's get into it. Hello, good day, and welcome. Hello to you too. Nice start. Although I've got to be honest, I wouldn't want to meet you in a dark alley. My name is Michael Chaves and this is Mad Mix Conspiracies. Okay, today I'm going to talk about the moon. So while I'm on the moon, before I get started, what I'll do is correct a few mistakes I made in previous videos, been pointed out by some viewers. Uh, Neil Armstrong's footprint, I suggested that you wouldn't be able to leave a footprint in bone dry dust. I was mistaken. Depends on how fine the grains are. Well, well done, Michael, on correcting yourself from one of your previous videos. Well, as for the moon dust, it's not so much that it's fine, but it's because the dust particles are actually very uneven and jagged. So it enables the particles to actually cling together to produce the footprint. I talked about this in one of my previous videos. I'll put a link in the description and at the end of the video. Hence, plaster dust. You could leave a footprint in dry plaster dust or dry flour. So yeah, but what it does do is lends to my cloud theory. Mm. Your cloud theory, yeah? Gonna have to look this one up, Michael. If it's that fine, which it clearly is, if there's a footprint in it, then our dust clouds will take longer. Okay, moving swiftly on. While I'm on them, I'll, I'll stick with NASA. Oh, onto NASA already. Here we go. Um, I don't believe a single word NASA say. Why am I not surprised? Okay, we're all clear on that by now. NASA's fake, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, Michael, so you're willing to accept that footprints in the moon dust is possible, but NASA's fake? Okay. But I like to use some of their um, theories and experiments in my vlogs to get across a point. So, Michael, let me get this straight. You'll accept that footprints in the moon were possible. You use NASA's own experiments and theories in your vlogs to prove a point, but NASA's fake? Do you not see the contradiction in there? No, I get a feeling you don't. Okay, today's point is, who built the moon? Who built the moon? <laughs> it's crazily obvious. Crazily obvious? You're obviously crazy. We look and we think, Oh, the moon sits there every night. Oh, Michael. Do you think the moon just suddenly just appears at night time and then magically disappears again? Come on. My eight-year-old knows this stuff. The moon orbits the Earth. And a lot of us don't think twice about it. But the moon shouldn't be there. It's crazy. The... The mathematics, the science around it is crazy. It shouldn't be there. Can yeah, somebody please explain why I get the feeling that mathematics and science don't belong in their sky's vocabulary? Answers on the postcard, please. So a few people have wrote books uh, 
Christopher Knight wrote a book called Who Built the Moon? Okay, suggests that the moon was put there. It's a space station, a bit like something out of Star Wars. This sounds suspiciously something like David Icke would say. Hollow moon inside a space station. Yeah, good idea. We'll bear that in mind. We'll hold on to that for a while. Uh, David Icke suggested that the moon was. Told you, David Icke. Was some kind of projector for a holographic universe. Oh, yes, David Icke. When he first started in the 80s, he thought he was the son of God and disabled people being punished for sins in a previous life. Well, Michael, he seems to be changing his mind because recently he was saying that the moon was actually exactly what you said was an alien base. But now he's saying it's a projection. Just seems all these conspiracy theorists can't make up their mind what they should be. None of this is real. It's all a hologram and it's being projected down from the moon. Yeah, OK, we'll go with that. Everything's out here on the table. Uh, but now I'm going to get back to NASA. OK, NASA say they went to the moon. Now, Apollo 12 supposedly fired back the ascending module from the... Uh, Translated, that means the ascent section of the lunar module was crashed into the moon. Lunar module and crashed it onto Earth. And NASA say that it rang like a bell which suggests that the moon is hollow. They said it rang for an hour. Okay, so that screams that the moon is hollow. <sighs> NASA, do us all a favour and don't use these sort of terms because these people take those sort of things literally. No, it didn't ring like a bell. Not literally. Right, that suits our narrative. But NASA said it. See where I'm going with that? Oh, we see where you're going with that. You cherry pick what you believe and don't believe from NASA while believing they're fake. Now, also, um, if the moon is hollow, it's a space station, it was put there by someone. The Anunnaki, Archons, whoever. Who? But way back when, it was put there by someone. So, us UFO, alien, conspiracy theory people, we love that. You're like, yeah, yeah, we'll have that. So... Yeah, I bet you will, Michael. So NASA also say, or um, employees of NASA, Freemasons, Edgar Mitchell, say that when he was on the moon, he saw an alien base. He saw aliens on the moon. He's referring to Edgar Mitchell, obviously, from the lunar module pilot of Apollo 14. I'm pretty sure he's never been quoted as saying that he saw an alien base on the moon. So I'm going to need a citation for that, Michael, and video evidence. Yeah, but he's a NASA employee and he's a Freemason. I don't believe him. So we've got contradictions. Either it was put there by aliens, either there's aliens on the moon, either it's hollow like a bell. Michael, to be honest with you, your whole video's full of contradictions, mate. I think you're getting confused about what you believe or what you don't believe. You either believe that NASA are fake or you don't. You either believe what people say or you don't. You can't just say one hand that you believe in and one hand that you do. They kept me in mind, Michael. Or they're space stations. But if it comes from NASA, I don't believe it. But it suits where we're going today, okay? But some things about the moon are blatantly obvious, all right? None of us can argue about this. OK, you know, I've said before, I don't believe in coincidence, right? So we look up at the moon and the sun. The moon is exactly 400 times smaller than the sun. OK, but, and it is a coincidence, it's also 400 times closer to Earth than the sun. I'll tell you what that means just in case you ain't caught that yet. When you look up at the moon, when it's full, it's exactly the same size as the sun. Well, let me stop you there, Michael, because the moon isn't the same size as the sun, it's the same angular size as the sun. But furthermore, 
it isn't exactly the same size. You see, for every part of the month, the moon is in a far part of its orbit from the Earth. At such times, it isn't big enough to cover the sun completely. If an eclipse happens, then the outer part of the sun's surface will appear as a ring around the moon. This type of event is called an annular or a ring eclipse. Um, it's essentially a partial eclipse. The sun doesn't darken, and you can actually look at the eclipse through special filters, but I wouldn't advise actually looking through it with the naked eye. Another thing to bear in mind is that the moon is actually gradually, very, very gradually, just a few centimeters each year, getting further away from the, from the, from the Earth. So eventually, we're never actually going to see any total eclipses. It will only partially cover the sun. Hence, we get a total eclipse. When the moon and sun line up, it completely covers it. A total eclipse, which means to the naked eye, they look exactly the same. Yeah, possibly. I'll just stop it there because then he just goes on about the flat earth and the moon and the sun and how that works on a flat earth as well. And we all know how that goes and we all know how it doesn't actually work. So it just goes to show that as much as I might be taking the mickey out of Michael, excuse the pun, conspiracy theories can't make up their mind what things are. And Moon is no exception to that. So only leaves me to say thank you very, very much for watching once again. If you like what I do, please subscribe and hit the bell icon and you'll be notified when I upload some more videos. And that leaves me just one more thing to say, and that is science is truth. Keep watching.